So we will discuss some of the very basic concepts related to production activity control for an assembly line. This is a big topic. And primarily I will be focusing on how we can actually uh, meet the rate of customer demand. How we can actually combine the operations if possible, or how we can uh, add resources to the assembly line to meet the rate of customer demand. So that is the aspect of production activity control that I will be primarily focusing on, but there are a number of other concepts related to assembly line that we might be able to discuss informally uh, depending upon the questions that you have. So example one, Best Vision is revamping its assembly line uh, to, improve uh, to improve efficiency. As shown, there are 10 steps to assembling a television set. Best Vision needs to produce 120 television sets in a 40 hour work week. Adhering to the precedence constraint, the task can be combined to form workstations. So there are total 10 tasks or 10 elements starting from A to J. They have to be performed in the sequence shown, but you can combine two consecutive tasks if possible. Now combining the two tasks means that four tasks can be performed at the same workstation. So that is meant by combining uh, different tasks to make uh, workstations. Given that one worker is assigned to each workstation, how many workers are required to operate the line? If demand for televisions is reduced to 100 sets per 40 hour week, how many workers will be needed to man the line? Now, there are a few pieces of information given. So there are different tasks, their sequence, and another is the precedence. So precedence for task B is task A. So task B cannot be started unless task A has been completed. Similarly, task C cannot be started unless task A has been finished. And same is true for task D. So the precedence for B, C, and D is task A. So you cannot start uh, task B, C, or D unless task A has been finished. Similarly, the precedence for task E is task B. For F, there are two precedents, C and E, and so on. So this is sort of what we call finish to start relationship. So you finish one operation in order to be able to start the following operation. And finally, it's given the time. So this is the standard time for each of these tasks or we can call it to be the cycle time for each of these tasks. So the first question is how we can combine these tasks because this is a manual assembly line and all tasks are manual. So we can combine them considering the precedence or the sequence in which they have to be performed. And we have to meet a demand of 120 television sets in 40 hour uh, work week. So first we need to find the tech time. What will be the tech time? The formula for the tech time, as we have just discussed, is available production time divided by rate of customer demand, and both should be for the same time limit. So if we are talking in terms of week, so 40 into 60 minutes per week, and weekly demand is 120 television sets. So that is simple. It will be 2400 divided by 120. So the tech time will be 20 minutes. Now this 20 minutes means that the cycle time or standard time or operation time at any workstation should not be greater than 20 minutes. So maximum allowed cycle time is 20 minutes. So at work, uh, work session one, uh, we can combine the first three tasks, they are A, B, and C, because combining them will give us a total time of eight plus four plus seven. So that is 19 minutes. So uh, we cannot add task D to workstation one because 
uh, the cycle time for workstation one will exceed 20 minutes. So that is not a lot. Similarly, the workstation two can be formed by, uh, say we can combine, no, there are different poss possibilities, uh, but I am discussing one of those and we will also see another possibility uh, in solution two. So one of the possibilities is to make workstation one combining task A, B, and C and workstation two combining task D and E. Now we cannot add task F because the time will become 21 minutes, so that is not allowed. So task D and E and time will be three plus seven. So that will be 10 minutes. Similarly, we can form workstation three and we can combine task F and G. So that will make the time to be 13 minutes, 11 plus two. Now we cannot add task H because that will make the time 21 minutes. And we can form the fourth workstation and that will be cons uh, consisting of uh, task H, I, and J. And the time will be 8 plus 5 plus 7. So that is 20. Now, none of these workstation is actually exceeding the allowed time of 20 minutes. Similarly, we can calculate the capacity. So that is available time uh, divided by time per uh, assembly. So that is 19 in this case. I hope you can make the calculations. So 2400 divided by 10, 2400 divided by 13, and 2400 divided by 20. So this will be how much? 2400 divided by 19. Anyone? 126.31. Okay, thank you. 126, this will be 240. 2400 divided by 13. One eighty four point six one. One eighty four, and this is one twenty. Now, of course, we are assuming hundred percent efficiency in this case, and we can meet the demand of one twenty. Now, which operation is the bottleneck? So that is obvious. Uh, the workstation four is the bottleneck that has the lowest capacity. The other workstations have greater capacity than uh, the demand of one twenty. So we are having four workstations and as was given in the question that there is one worker required at each workstation. So we need four workers in order to meet the demand of 120 TV sets every week. So one thing that is not mentioned in this slide is shown on the next slide. This is the same solution. So these are the four workstations that we will be forming. So first workstation will consist of task A, B, and C, then task D and E at workstation two, F and G at workstation three, and H, I, J at workstation four. Now, one thing that should be assured is the precedence. So first A will be performed and then B, C, and D. So that is assured. Similarly, E cannot be started unless B has been done. So that is also assured. B has already been performed before we perform E. And you, can, you could notice for other tasks as well. So what I mean to say is that these alphabets also show the sequence of operations. So at workstation one, first task A will be performed, then task B will be performed, and then task C will be performed and so on. So, this is one of the possible solutions that we are having task A, B, and C at workstation one, B and D at <clears throat> workstation two, and so on. Of course, there are other possibilities. So one of them is shown here that instead of having A, B, and C, 
we combine task A and B only at workstation one. So C has been moved to workstation two. It was here uh, in previous case, but it is uh, added to workstation two uh, in this case. And then we are having C, D, and D. So seven, three plus seven, 17 minutes. And then we are having F and G. So that is 11 plus two. And finally, we have H I, uh, H, I, and J, and that is equal to 20 minutes. Now still the workstation four is the bottleneck, as was the case uh, previously. And of course, the maximum output that we can achieve is still 120. But the combination is different. So instead of A, B, and C, we are having task A and B here. And instead of C and D, we are having C, D, and D, and so on. And the last two workstations are actually uh, the same. We are having F, G, and H, I, and J. So you might be thinking of any other combination as well, but out of these two, which we have discussed, which one is better and why? Now, in terms of output, both are the same. The maximum output achievable is 120 in both cases. But in option two, we are having slightly more balanced line. Both are unbalanced, but relatively more balanced line is achieved in a solution two. So in solution one, the task, uh, sorry, the workstation two was requiring 10, 10 minutes. And, uh, and workstation four was requiring 20 minutes. So there was a difference of 10 minutes. So in simple word, workstation two will be idle for 50% of the time. In solution two, we are having relatively better solution. So the difference of the fastest and slowest workstation is eight minutes. So the fastest workstation, this is in this case, workstation one will be idle for relatively less time in this solution as compared to the solution one. But of course, both of these lines are not balanced and we have to work on balance these, uh, but we are not going into detail of that. 